Okay, we are in session number three. Uh, we are just going to have one more uh, session to finish this um, discourse. So we are going to end the session here today with, um, it is not like a vocabulary, but we are going to see what are the uses of some uh, specific words um, and it's very interesting because we are going to know the different uses and the different meanings that these both um, um, words have. In this case, we are going to talk about two words. And we are going to see that in English, uh, we can use uh, one word for a lot of different things. So the, the interesting part of this topic is that um, when you see the name of the topic, you are going to say, but in that case, how can we talk about that uh, word uh, in one hour? Because we know that there are verbs and they are used for expressing these kind of ideas, but no. In that case, we are going to have a lot of information about just two words. Para la sesión de hoy, vamos a ver dos palabras. Dos palabras que vamos a ver para qué se utilizan, cómo se utilizan, en qué contexto las utilizamos. Vamos a ver ejemplos y todo eso. Solo son dos palabras, nada más, las que vamos a estudiar. Pero esas dos palabras tienen muchos significados diferentes, tienen eh, diferentes usos y es mucha información que es bastante interesante porque um, we know that uh, in which cases we can use that word and also they are very, very common in uh, um, speaking uh, English and also writing and all of that things because um these two words uh, we can use it a lot because they are very easy to understand um we know how to create sentences with them we know what is the message that we want to give with these two words but now we are going to learn more about that two words remember we are just talking about two words in English, two words in English, but we are going to have a lot of information about them. So let me show you what are those two words that we are going to learn today. It's kind of funny uh, sometimes because we say two words, but why? We have this one, as entail. And I'm going to use the word tell because I want to tell you something. It's going to rain here because I am hearing some sound. And I hope it's not going to rain right now, but um, we are going to see what is the result for that. So if we're, um, maybe if I am having troubles with the connection or something like that, uh, you know that um, I am just saying that it's going to rain here. So you know that what is the problem here? So we are going to talk about ask and tell. Just that, ask and tell. You know that ask in Spanish is preguntar and tell is decir. And that's something basic. We already know about that word. But now we are going to have these um, two words explaining it through different uses. Sabemos que en inglés nosotros a veces utilizamos las palabras um, de muchas maneras, no solo de una sola manera, sino que utilizamos las palabras dependiendo del contexto. So in that case, we are going to see the different contexts in which we can use these words. We're going to begin with uh, the explanation of ask and tell. I mean, the uses. 
like a list. We are going to create a list in which we are going to see what are the different uses for ask, and we are going to see what are the different uses for tell. And also, we are going to write an example of that explanation. Así que esta, esta, este tema va a tener dos partes esenciales. Una, que es el uso que le estamos dando a la palabra as y un ejemplo. Y otro es el uso que le estamos dando a la palabra tell y un ejemplo de cómo utilizamos en este contexto. So, we are going to see the difference between the explanation and the examples that we are going to see. So, for this one, and to, uh, in order to make it easier to understand, I'm going to uh, do it like this. I'm going to insert a table. It will be like a um, very long, long, long table, but we are going to do it in parts. We are going to have um, different tables because we are going to write 20, then 20, and like that. So let's begin with the first one, and it's ask. And then we have tell. Both of them are verbs. I mean, there are verbs, and here is a verb. And what is the use or the information that we have here for the verb ask? It means, or we can use it to make requests. In this case, to request. And what are we going to request? We are going to look for information or an answer. a question. En este sentido, creo que este es como el que más utilizamos cuando vemos el verbo ask, que es, ¿verdad?, para pedir información o una respuesta a una pregunta. Nosotros preguntamos porque necesitamos conseguir información. So, what is the example for this? I ask her age. Le pregunté su edad. Here, this is the example. And for tail, we have, in this case, it's transitive. And it means to count, recon, or enumerate. So in this case, it's talking about making like accounts or a, talking about a position numbers and all of that thing. And we have different examples. Also, there were over a dozen. Then we have, can you tell time on a clock? And then he had untold, he had untold well. So in that case, remember that we are using the verb tell, and in this case, it's not like we are just going to use this form of the word, because in some cases, we are going to use it in past or something like that. So if you can see, uh, like this verb in past, it is the same because it's the, the base of the verb. Así que si ustedes ven eh, que estamos utilizando en los ejemplos el verbo, pero en pasado, no hay ningún problema porque estamos hablando en realidad de la base, ¿verdad? De ese verbo que es as y que es tell, pero lo podemos utilizar también en pasado, que nos va a llevar a lo mismo, porque estamos hablando de la misma opción, solo que en un tiempo diferente. The second one, again, ask, 
that is a verb, saying that to put forward a question to be answered. And we have the example to ask a question. And in this one, I didn't mark this. Then we have tail. That is a verb again. And we have here that in this case, we are going to use it to narrate. Vamos a narrar. And we have different examples. I want to tell a story. I want to tell a story. And the other one, I want to tell you a story. So we have the, the Two different sentences that have the same meaning, so the, some elements are different. I want to tell you a story. Es lo mismo, solo que en el segundo agregamos el sujeto you, o el, el pronombre you. So in the second one, we have for us, that is not changing, um, like the intention because it's the same action in the first one and in the second one because we are asking something but in tail in the first one is talking about numbers or talking about um something like we need to count and in the second one is to narrate something in this case we're telling uh, or saying something about a story so it's kind of different Así que en el primero de as y en el segundo tenemos siempre verdad la misma opción de preguntar. En el primero pues estamos eh, tratando de conseguir lo que es información específica. En el segundo pues es simplemente verdad decir que tenemos una pregunta que tiene que ser eh, respondida. Y en el verbo tell en el primero es para contar, para enumerar o para hacer algo parecido. Y ahí es donde estamos hablando de cantidades, números y cosas así. Y en el segundo es para narrar, para hablar, para contar. And in this case, I want to tell a story. Quiero decir una historia. En este caso es, digamos, a muchas personas. I want to tell a story. Y en la segunda, I want to tell you a story. Ya le estamos diciendo específicamente a quién, a ti. Quiero decirte o quiero contarte una historia. Then we have, again, this is a verb. We know that this is functioning as a verb. And we have to interrogate or inquire of a person. So interrogate or inquire And then we have tail. And this one said to convey by speech to say. And the example for us is I'm going to ask this lady for directions. And for tail, we have these two examples. Finally, someone told him the truth.
And the second one, he seems to like to tell lies. So in the number three, we have in the verb ask that is used to interrogate or inquire of a specific person. In this case, the, the example said, I'm going to ask this lady for, and that is the information that we need, direction. And in tail, we have to convey by speech or to say something. So in that case, it said, finally, someone told him, the third and the second one he seems to like to tell lies finalmente alguien le dijo la verdad y en el segundo él parece que le gusta decir mentiras so in that case we are like having the same line um for the verb because in that case it's is 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 that information that we are going to have uh, using uh, that verb in this case is doing something different because in the in the first one it's like ask directly then uh, put a question to be answered and in this case it's to ask for some something uh, from a, a specific person in this case it's someone that we uh, don't know because maybe we are in, on the street and in the second one is to tell to 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 tell to say something uh, about someone, about a specific situation, about a story, something like that. Then we have, again, as, and this one is for uh, or to request or petition. Usually or. And we have the example. To ask for a second helping at dinner. And the second one, to ask for help with homework. So in this case, it's saying to request or petition. Es un, un, una petición, ¿verdad? En este caso, lo vamos a utilizar como una petición. Y usualmente vamos a escribir for después de el verbo ask. To ask for, to ask for help. En este caso, vamos a utilizarlo mayormente con for. To ask for a second helping at dinner. And to ask for help with homework then we have tail again and this one is to instruct or inform and we have we have please tell me how to do it En este caso, siempre tiene que ver ¿verdad? con el hecho de hablar, de decir, pero en este caso es para instruir o dar instrucciones y para informar. Ya no es simplemente decir, ¿verdad? Eh, hablar exactamente del hecho de, de decir. En este caso es, sí sabemos que se refiere a decir, a hablar, pero es para eh, hablar de instrucciones o para informar. Así como lo dice el ejemplo, please tell me how to do it. Por favor, dime cómo hacerlo. Estamos pidiendo o estamos eh, hablando de instrucciones. Then, for us, we have here. This one is to um, request permission to do something. Vamos a pedir permiso para hacer algo. En este, en este caso sí estamos preguntando eh, por algo, pero vamos a decirlo de esta manera. Vamos a pedir permiso para hacer algo. 
no es simplemente voy a preguntar por permiso, sino es pedir permiso para hacer algo. And we have the example. It says, she asked to see the doctor. She asked to see the doctor. In this case, we are not like going to translate like very uh, specific. Like, ella preguntó para ver al doctor. We can change a little bit of that and we can say, um, ella pidió ver al doctor. In that case, it's, we are, we know that it means to ask, to preguntar si podemos ver. Pero en este caso podemos decir pidió ver al doctor. Like asking something about the doctor. Then, did you ask to use the car? Preguntaste para usar el carro. We can translate it like that. Then we have tail. And it says to order, to direct, or to say to someone. To order, to direct, to say to someone. And we have the example. Tell him to go away. Aquí es para ordenar, para dirigir o para decirle a alguien. Y tenemos el ejemplo. Tell him to go away. Dile que se vaya lejos. Dile que se aleje. Then we have again as. And in this one, it's kind of long because it's to require, demand, claim, or expect, whether by way of remuneration or return, as a, a matter of necessity. In this case, vamos a pedir, a demandar, a reclamar, esperar, ¿verdad? Ya sea en un caso de remuneración o de regreso, ¿verdad? De algo, que nos regresen algo como un, o en la manera de una necesidad. And we have the example, and it says, what price are you asking for the house? ¿Qué precio, verdad? Estás pidiendo, ¿qué precio le has puesto para la casa? O, o ¿cuánto pides para la casa? Then we have tail. And this one is to notice, identify, or distinguish. Es para notar, ¿verdad? Identificar o distinguir algo. And in the example, it says, can you tell whether those flowers are real or silk? 
from this distance. No, there is no way to tell. In that case, they are talking about the material of the flowers. In that case, is maybe we are in a store and we can um, or we want to buy something, and we are not like very sure if we want to buy the flowers because we need to know if the flowers are real or there are another material and we cannot tell that uh, what is the specific material that the flowers has because we can see clearly so in that case we have this example in which they are asking can you tell whether those flowers are real or sealed from this distance and the other person say no there is no way to tell because they are maybe kind of far or it is not like we can uh, see clearly through um, the glass or something like that Then we have another one that is, this one is also one of the most common uses that we can um, have when we are learning English. To use as um, to invite someone to a party, to do something, to watch a movie or something like that. So in that case, this one is very, very common when we are uh, speaking in English. So in this case, it's to invite. Este es el invitar y así como el primero que es para pedir información, eh, para pedir permiso y para invitar son como de los más comunes que nosotros vemos cuando utilizamos el verbo ask. And we have the example. Don't ask them to the wedding. No, les, no los invites a la, a la boda. Don't ask them to the wedding. And you can say, but what, what if we have the verb invite? In that case, we are not using it because for us, it's very, very simple to use invite. Don't invite them to the wedding. And it's easier to understand. And it's valid because uh, we can change words uh, when we are creating sentences. But in this case, it's also another way to say that kind of phrases using just the verb ask. So if you want to use ask, uh, despite of invite, you can use it. Or if you want to use invite, you can use it also. Also, Then we have tell, that it means to reveal, revelar. And in this example say, Time will tell what became of him. El tiempo dirá, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando de una revelación. Then this one. Is something different because in this case it's very, very um, like specific. In this case, we don't have uh, an example because the, the same um, specification is like the example. In this case, we have to publish in charge for marriage said 
um, of both events and the person. Es como publicar en la, en la, en la iglesia, ¿verdad? La, eh, los matrimonios y cosas así. So the next one is tail again. And in this case, it's, it's to be revealed. Very simple. Then again, in this case is light. In este caso, vamos a hablar de algo figurado, ¿verdad? To take a person's situation as an example. Es tomar en el sentido figurado, ¿verdad? La situación de una persona como un ejemplo. And we have tail, and it says to have an effect, especially uh, not, uh, something that is very easy to note, um, to be apparent, to be demonstrated. Esto es tener un efecto bastante notable que uh, puede ser aparente o que puede ser demostrado. And we have one example here. Here, Gerald was moving slower. His wounds were beginning to tell. El Sir Gerald se estaba moviendo de manera más lenta. Sus heridas estaban comenzando a decir, a decir que, que estaba bastante herido, se estaban mostrando. Then this one is an act or instance of asking. And then we have tail. And it says to use that or similar object as an eye to prayer. So look at these ones. They are very, very different because in this case, it's talking about an object. It is not like talking about uh, the action or something because they are talking about that something that we can use to make a prayer. 
es usar, ¿verdad?, algunas cuentas o, o algo por el estilo como ayuda, ¿verdad?, para eh, orar, para hacer oraciones. So, in that case, it's not like eh, very common eh, or something that we cannot eh, think about when we are eh, saying diverse hell because they are very, very different in meaning from the word that we already know. So in that case, um, this is the things that I was saying about uh, these two words because um, in some cases we can use another uh, like meaning uh, of these words because they are not like the verb of asking or saying something like in this example or, or this explanation that is to use this or a similar object as an aid is a prayer. It's not related to the verb and maybe we don't have that information when we are talking about sale. Así que eh, estos verbos, ¿verdad? Son verbos conocidos, verbos con los que nosotros trabajamos, pero que en inglés, por eso lo decimos, en inglés hay de, demasiadas eh, circunstancias en las que usan eh, estos verbos o esas palabras que son totalmente diferentes a como nosotros creeríamos que se usan. Porque obviamente, ¿verdad? Las personas, dependiendo de la región, la zona, la cultura y todo, eh, tienen frases específicas, palabras específicas, para referirse a ciertas cosas, así como lo tenemos los hispanohablantes. So in that case, it's related to the language. And maybe we are not like saying, why can I imagine that situation and that's uh, because they are uh, using the words in a different way so then we are going to we have just let me see a couple of words to complete this, uh, this information, so don't worry. But I need to add more of this. So we're going to continue with the other one here. So in this case, if uh, something asked or asked for like a request, Again, we are talking about requests. And for tail, it says that it's to inform someone in authority about a wrongdoing. Es informar a las autoridades, ¿verdad? De que algo está eh, haciéndose de una mala manera. And in this case, we are talking about like someone in authority. It's not like just the police. It's not like a soldier or something like that. It's someone that has authority in a place. Alguien que tenga la autoridad en un lugar, ya sea mamá, ya sea papá, un hermano mayor, un tío, un abuelo, profesor, director. Someone that has authority is someone in authority in this case or in this uh, specification. And we have the example, and it says, I saw you steal those sweets. I'm going to tell. Te vi robar esos dulces. Voy a contarlo. A quien, a alguien que tenga autoridad en este momento.
Then we have this. This one is also another one that is very common, is uh, an asking price. When we are asking for the price of something, uh, we are doing this action to ask. Then we have tell, but in this case means to reveal information in post throughout through outright expository statement, contrast with show. En este caso es hablar, ¿verdad? Eh, o revelar información en prosa en una manera de exposición que contrasta con un show. En este caso es más like formal or something like that. And we have an, an example, and it says, Maria rewrote the section of her novel that talked about Meg and Sadie's friendship. She had less telling and more, and more showing. So in this case, it's saying que Maria volvió a escribir la sección de su novela que habla sobre la amistad de Meg y de Faye para tener menos, como menos decir, pero más mostrar o hacer. So then we have we have this one that is asked and is talking about to request to seek to obtain by words to a petition to solicit often with of in the sense of from before the person addressed. In this case, es pedir, buscar, obtener a través de las palabras una petición o solicitar. A veces lleva of en el sentido de from y también, ¿verdad? Que va 
eh, antes de la persona a la que se le va a hablar, ¿verdad? To request to speak And in this case, we have an example, and it says, as counsel, we pray the of God. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. It's like a kind of phrase. It's kind of that is, um, expression. This kind of we we find it like in in books or all books and all of that things. Then we have tell, and in this case, is talking about something of the internet, and is a private message to an individual in a chat room or a whisper. In this case, it's talking about that we can send messages to a private chat with someone on the internet. Then we have another one, and this one is to invite us to ask one to an entertainment. Este es como invitar, ¿verdad? A algo que tiene que ver con entretenimiento.
Then we have tail. And this one says to make known. To publish. To disclose. To devote. Tienes todos a hacer de conocimiento, ¿verdad? Publicar o divulgar información. Then we have, I think this one is the last one. And this one is, consider obligatory request and expect. And we have this example. We require our secretary to be on time. I and we ask him too much of these children. I expect my students to arrive in time for their lesson. So in that case, we are considering something like obligatory and we are requesting something, but we expect an answer for that uh, the question. Así que es algo que consideramos obligatorio que pedimos y esperamos que se cumpla. And the last one for tail here. This one is to take effect, to produce. A March effect every expression tail. So, um In that case, if you can see, it's kind of a long information. We have a lot of information about two simple words. Because in English, we can use them like to say, I ask them to, to tell me the hour. Or 
in that case, you can say, I want to tell you something. I can tell you something. I can, or I saw my teacher that I have bigger, something like that. But if you can see, there are different, different contexts or different ways in which, in which we can use these words. So it is not that simple, if you can see. Um, and there are more words in which we can have this long uh, uses, not just for these two, because in that case, we know that in some cases we are using a verb, a an adjective, an adverb, a word that has a different meaning depending on the context. So in that case, it's like we are not just to have one information for a word, we need to search for more meanings, for more details of that word. Así que eh, esto es más que todo para demostrar, ¿verdad? Que las palabras en inglés no tienen un solo significado. Tienen muchos usos, muchos significados, y que a veces nosotros nos quedamos con el más simple, ¿verdad? Con el que mejor se nos acomoda, pero eh, no significa que ese sea el único eh, uso que le podamos dar a esas palabras. Dependiendo del contexto, dependiendo de la situación, de las palabras, de las estructuras, estos pueden cambiar, ¿verdad?, de significado. So, in that case, we have a lot of examples here of how to use this word. And also, we can say something else about this one because it's almost time to end the session. But in this case, um, it is not like just tell and ask. We have say, tell, speak, or talk that they have similarities and they have differences. Um, and in that case, uh, you know that we are talking about something that we need to express, but in the case of tell and talk, that is in fact, tell means to give information to a person or a group of persons. So in that case, Tell, the verb tell is to give information to a person. Así que tell is dar información a una persona o un grupo de personas. Say, the word say is um, to say something, uh, to say something to a person or something like that. Speak, that is not one of these uh, verbs that we have here, but a speak is uh, talking in general with no specific details. And we can use a speak with, and we can use it for when we are speaking with someone, and a speak to someone. Así que también tenemos el speak, que es una manera general, el verbo speak que no agregamos detalles específicos y que podemos utilizarlo de dos formas. Speak with, estamos hablando con alguien, o speak to, le hablamos a alguien, ¿verdad? So, in that case, it's like, there are used for talking, for saying, for expressing, but they have different meanings, different contexts, and different places, or uh, situation in which we are going to use them. So, we are going to end the session here. And remember, tomorrow is the last day of the course. So, we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night. And uh, if you have uh, something or troubles with uh, the work in the platform, you can ask for help. So, see you tomorrow in the last day of this course. Bye, teacher. Bye bye. Good night, teacher. Good See night. you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye. You're welcome.